Okay. So now we have Dr. Bina presenting on digital play for serious learning. Um, Dr. Bina is a senior lecturer and a program director of SUTD CGH Healthcare. She teaches uh, fresh more science subjects. Her expertise and research interests include active learning, flip classroom, and um, uh, flip class. Sorry. Um, uh, flip classroom and virtual laboratories uh, should be sharing on facilitating guest speakers from industries play testing games coming up with innovative ways to assess uh, students effective journal clubbing uh, remotely over to dr Bina. Okay, um, just give me a minute to check everything. Okay, so um, thank you very much um, and a very good afternoon to friends. I see many familiar faces, uh, colleagues from SUTD and our guests from the other institutions. I have 15 minutes to share, which is a very short time, uh, to share with you about my efforts to bring in uh, digital play for serious learning. And uh, so I will be speaking a little bit quickly and we should be showing you snippets of things that I've done, specifically uh, three forms of digital play. And if you're interested to find out more, please uh, contact me after this. So I'm going to start off with the rationale, right? So all of us go through a reflective period in our lives. And um, so, and one, and for me, you know, I thought about, you know, what, what is the, the main thing that I would like to improve in my classroom teaching, right? And so then I stumbled upon this book called Playful Intelligence, I'm not getting endorsed for, you know, <laughs> for this book, but written by Anthony T. Benedict. And this book, uh, you know, really um, strike a chord with me, um, where he he actually talks about how, um, as we progress from you know childhood to adulthood, you know, we we lose this playful intelligence, right? And he focuses on these five things: humor, wonder, sociability, imagination, and spontaneity, right? And so for the first time, I'm actually teaching uh, term eight um, elective called zero one point one one four instructional design of serious games for healthcare. And because these are Thermate students, they are actually, this is, you know, the next, they're going to be graduating. Actually, they have graduated and they are going to be, you know, working. So I thought this was a good time to remind them, you know, to still be playful in their workspace and in their daily lives, right? And so I thought that, okay, playfulness is important, right? And uh, the other thing is um, I'm a mother, a uh, yeah, happy mother of two kids. And, you know, during the holidays, I, I actually let them play. Uh, we have a PlayStation and they like Street Fighter, right? And so I realized that, you know, they, they really can spend um, around two to three hours, quite frankly. We don't stop them from feeling that it can just go on. And they're fully engaged, immersed in playing the game, you know, and, I, and it just occurred to me, you know, like, why, why is it that, what is there in this game that I'm not doing or replicating in my classroom such that my students are actually responding in that similar engrossed uh, manner, right? So I kind of put a, a, a personal mission on myself to bring back play and fun into the classroom, okay? And because um, of our COVID-19 situation, play became digital play. And the course, um, I had to transform the entire course to a fully 100% remote learning, okay, which, uh, which actually just uh, completed. Okay. Okay, so circuit breaker literally kicked in as the course started, right? And um, so um, I'll be providing you with three examples, just snippets of things that I, I tried to do in the course. And the first one that I had to uh, reframe, right, was the continuous assessments. Right, so we were we were kind of well. I was forced to be creative with with how to assess them because it has to be remote. Um, so the first the first uh, CA one, I actually tried out oral synchronous, or some people medical folks might know them as Viva. So um, I did it as a speed dating event in, in a way that um, 
I had, well, it was just me, 35 students, five minutes per student. Okay, so it took about three and a half to four hours and the students were thankfully very accommodating and they, they, they responded that they actually wanted a longer session and then they, they actually had fun. You know, it's the first time that they were actually being tested one on one. Right. And so this way also, you know, it's kind of cheap proof and it did allow me to see, you know, who could really answer the questions and who are struggling as well. So, you know, oral is a way. Um, then the other continuous assessment, um, I decided to bring in uh, more play and fun. So here the, it was to it was to actually practice the fundamentals of play testing, which is part of the curriculum. Right. So I asked them to modify an existing game and play test the two versions to decide which one to keep. And they will perform the play test where two versions of the same game are compared in order to see if a modification is beneficial, right? So I know that they are at home, right? So no choice, you know, what's around you is, is more likely to be board games, right? So Monopoly, Poker, Hopscotch, Chinese checkers, you know, anything that you have. And then think of, you know, one particular modification that you can make, right? So you would actually make that uh, in, in a prototype of this modified version create a script that will be read to the play testers, giving the minimal set of instructions, and then they have to decide what sort of our questions or feedback will they be asking, all right? So they will go through this uh, entire process at home. And uh, so they need to invite at least three people. So um, I assume, you know, actually not, not actually Jalen was not very accurate that there were at least three people at home, right? So. Uh, but I did have students who actually only have two people uh, at home. And so um, I said, that's fine. You know, maybe you can get your friends to virtually play the game with you as well. Okay. So they did the observations and then they were, they were actually asked to write a two page report summarizing the test and then a five minute uh, video recording of the highlights of their, of their play test. All right. So I'm going to show you just a little, the first 30 seconds of three of the videos. I need to share computer sound. Give me a minute. Okay, so this is one of them. Hi, Fariha here. In this session, I'll be walking you through my findings from the playtest assignment. Here, I've chosen to modify Pictionary, a word guessing game, in an attempt to make it more enjoyable. In a simple Pictionary game, one player draws the word while the others guess it. There are many variations to Pictionary out there and the most common way to play it is in a group setting where there is the one versus one team game. I have tested the game on four playtesters with diverse gaming profile. They play from 2 to 20 hours of games a week and their favorite games range from conversational to multiplayer action games during the playtesting. Okay, I'll stop this here. So she decided to modify Pictionary and she found four good friends who, who you know, actually went through the, uh, the game online with her and she presented the findings. Okay. Hi, this is the another student. I'll be going through the playtesting I've carried out to determine if my modified version of Tic-Tac-Toe is more engaging in terms of requiring more focus and planning ahead by players. So I'm sure you would have heard of Tic-Tac-Toe. It is a classic two-player game that is typically played on a 3 by 3 grid. The first player that gets a line of 3 will win the game, and when all 9 squares are filled, it's a draw. In my modified version, the 3x3 board will still be used. However, only the most recent 6 moves from both players will stay on the board, and when no one wins after 30 moves, the game ends as a tie between the two players. So now that we know about the modified version, let me introduce our playtesters. So we'll have Xuwen, Junta, and Wei Jin as the playtesters. Alright, so she decided to modify Tic Tac Toe and roped in three of her classmates to actually play the great the game and then she went through the entire process for this game one more and they'll be inter oh. this one was blackjack hi everyone today we are play testing the game blackjack and play test will determine if adding a dice up system makes the game more engaging and encourages risk taking the only difference between the original and modified games are the addition of a die roulette so what this means is that each player can change either one of their two cards at their turn by rolling a die. First, they pick a number between 1 to 12, choose higher or lower to guess if the number on the die they are about to roll is higher or lower than the number they picked. Next, they roll the die. So, if their guess is correct, they get to do the card swap, and if not, they don't. The only catch here is that they have to pay the game master the number they just rolled on the die, regardless of whether or not they get to do the card swap. Here's an Here's an example. So if I picked four and higher. Okay, I'll stop it here. Let me stop sharing computer sound. 
Right, so these are just three examples. So I had 35 uh, students actually submitting this via OneDrive and uh, the feedback was actually very good, right? So this is a fun, painful, continuous assessment and they actually did uh, a very good uh, job at it because it was application of knowledge that we actually, uh, that actually certain concepts that I introduced them to. And so they applied this in this play test as well, okay? So this was quite fun and I actually tried some of their modifications at home with uh, my kids as well. Okay, so this was the first example. So Everyone. how we, oops, let me get that, yeah. Of um, how I, I kind of uh, reframed the continuous assessment for, you know, for, the, for remote learning. Okay, now the second example, um, as you know, you know, at SUPD, we do a lot of learning by doing and the experiential learning cycle, you know, is, is uh, something that we include in, in a lot of our uh, curriculum. And so um, I wanted the students to actually experience a serious game so that they can understand uh, the design principles behind it and then be able to apply those to provide feedback to this particular game that is already out there. Right, and so um, this particular example is called Stress Jam, and I I was introduced to this game when I went for conference Games for Health Europe uh, in Eindhoven in the Netherlands, and I met uh, Dr. Peter Jerzyk, who had a booth. You know, he was representing his company, and he he had the whole setup there, and I was very impressed by uh, what it can actually achieve, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. So Peter was very kind and he even gave a guest lecture on uh, regulating emotions, which is something uh, we talk about in, in this particular course in serious games to support lifestyle decisions and well-being. Right. So uh, very briefly, how this works is um, you have a VR technology, so some kind of a gear that you need to put on, biosensors that you put on your chest, um, and then you have a, a game basically. And, uh, and here the game is a tropical island and you have to complete many fun and challenging tasks on this island, okay? So for example, this place a glass ball, or you know, uh, you know climb some vines, cross every vine, every vine. And as you go through this, um, you will actually get to see your heart rate variability, right? So what it does is going through these challenges actually trains you to self-regulate your stress. Right, their rationale is that stress is not bad. Right, if if there's if you can regulate your stress and you know a certain level of stress actually works well for you and it's actually good for decision making, then that will actually uh, can be very useful. Right, so this is the in brief the rationale. I won't go through this, but this is readily uh, available online. Their pilot study by Stress Gen. Okay, so what we did was together with uh, Cherish, I'm not sure if she's here, Idea Lab. Um, we set up, we set up uh, the stuff for the students. I was lucky that this was in the second half of, uh, of the term. And so we were allowed to have one physical lab so the students could come back. Um, and so we use the Oculus here, Oculus Rift, and these are the controllers that's attached to it. And this is the biosensor that we purchased from Stress Gem itself that you put on your chest. And this is what the game looks like. Okay. This is the heart rate variability. So as you play, you will see what's going on here. And there's even like a, a meter here. So blue means you're in the good safe zone in terms of stress levels. Orange and red means you need to come down and go back to blue. Okay, so that's that's how it is. And so the students came, you know, we, we obviously uh, respected all safety distance measures. And uh, you can see he has his Oculus on and then the controllers and he's uh, yeah, totally immersed in, in, in the game. And these are yeah, the other students who are trying it on. I, I actually gave this, uh, I assigned this, this play test to one group of students. And so they, they were the facilitators. They came up with the survey questions and they even uh, kind of tested out the game first and then gave some hints to, to the other students on how to do it, right? And this is a video just to show you the movements. So he is actually swimming, right? So this is one of the challenges to get out of the, like a lake. And she is trying to climb a vine. So you can see that in the background, the red color thing here that's being highlighted, right? So she's trying to climb that. That's one of the challenges as well, okay? So then the students, you know, um, had to answer a 
which is something that we cover in the course as well, a 16 item trial user evaluation form that consists of all of these questions. And the group of students came up with their validation results, you know, which tells you how, how it went and that the majority of participants found it engaging and immersive and they identified uh, certain points uh, and factors for improvement. Okay, so if you would like to find out more about these things, uh, just feel free to contact me. Right, so this was the second, yeah, that was the second example of how I brought in digital play um, into this curriculum. The final example is Kodomo, closer to home. Uh, so Kodomo is, Kodomo is actually uh, founded by our pioneer students at SUTD, right? And I was, I was actually liaised with Kat Leong here, right, to, to try this out in class. And I, I really recommend this. I, I find that it was so easy to actually uh, perform these uh, ideation challenges uh, remotely using this uh, particular technology or tool, right? So the, the, the tool that I'm talking about is called Roll Jack, and this is an ideation on a roll. So it's a gamified rapid ideation tool to engage, collaborate, and innovate with your audience, right? So in this course, I teach students the principles of gamification. And so Roll Jack was an example, a case study of gamification. Right now, these slides are, are actually shared by Kodomo themselves, okay? These are their slides. And so how it works is boost your team's creative output. So you can choose a challenge. So I, I, came, I come up with problem statements. If you like, you can pick certain constraints. And then the students are asked to sketch ideas. And then they can swap with one each other and collaborate. So work on that particular idea, right? And then at the end, all the students will vote. And then we'll see which are the winning three uh, ideas, okay? So there are many. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So we have uh, there are many game modes, right, that re reflect upon a range of design principles. And the one that I chose was uh, the good persona empathy, because this is uh, something that I focused on uh, during class. Okay. So for settings for instructors, right, you can choose your number of participants. And then you can choose uh, the duration for the sketching. You know, did you want one minute, two minutes, three minutes? Number of swaps, so how many times will the students swap their ideas? Um, and then idea evaluation, which is pretty much your rubrics, right? So here they give you examples of creativity, confidence, impact. There are a lot of others. I, I believe I picked uh, scalability as well, right? And then at the end, the students will, will vote. So the question, we did it. We tried it twice. Uh, the problem statement I gave them was how might we reimagine access to healthcare for elderly and how might we gamify healthy eating habits for urban consumers? Okay, so I'm going to just show you a snippet of how that goes. So this is uh, us in class, basically in our Zoom class. And I'm just waiting for all the students to join in, right? So you need to put in, you know, at least five minutes. Students take some time to actually log in and join in. Let me see if I can make this. Okay, so then I gave them the problem statement and they are starting to sketch. And so what they see is, you know, how many seconds they have left. And now they have swapped. So I, I chose two swapping. So someone else's idea add on to their awesome creation, right? And then the countdown's happening. Okay, they're still sketching. Right, then at the end, it's time to vote. So they'll vote on all the um, ideas to see which one they feel is the best. And then okay, it's kind of okay. results time. Control yourself before it's too late. Right, so this is, then we go through <laughs> the, the winning entries, basically. And the winner. Yeah, and you can see that the students are actually having a ball of a time doing this. And the feedback was very good for, for this particular activity. All right, well done. Okay, and then the other thing that you can take note is you have a copy of um, all of the ideas which you can keep for yourself or share with class, right? So, and the scores as well. Okay, so this is what they kind of collaborated and, and they did. So this is called the idea gallery. Okay, so um, just before I end, I realized time is running out. So uh, they identified that the top three challenges when ideating a group was the lack of inspiration, a dominant voice in the group, um, you know, and, and the difficulty to express their ideas through words, right? Which is why 
uh, role jack, I think, kind of came about, right? So that the in the introvert maybe you know can can contribute more, and also if you're not so good with words, you know, you can draw, right? So then they provided feedback to the folks at Kudomo as well, and uh, this might be useful to instructors who want to use this. Uh, they felt that they needed longer time for drawing and to come up with ideas. Um, yeah, the others, I think, you know, the slashing sushi is actually in between uh, ideas when you're waiting for your turn, they're slicing sushi, which is quite cute. Okay? And there was a, a comment that the drawing function tools were not easy, especially on mobile, and it, you need to get used to it. Okay? So with that, um, I would like to firstly thank all of my students at 0114. Uh, it's the first time I offered this course, and it had to be 100% remote learning, and I was on this personal mission to bring you know, play and fun back into the classroom and they accommodated a lot of my uh, craziness during this, this period and they were actually very sporting. So thank you to, to this uh, awesome batch. And uh, thank you also to uh, Prof. Peking Leong and Prof. Vicky Ang and their team from UGS and SMT because, uh, you know, without you, this course could not have happened. Okay, I really needed all, all the support. So I leave you with this quote. Thank you. Sorry, Vijaya, over to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you Dr. Bina.